Hi, I am Sandy Schwach. I have been a member of Holy Cross for almost 50 years. I was married here. My two children were baptized and confirmed here. My daughter was married here and two grandchildren were baptized. My husband Bruce's funeral was held here. We are so blessed in our congregation to have Pastor Meredith, Pastor Andy, and the entire staff who provide each and every one of us with all of these possible supportive services. Holy Cross is my spiritual home, and it's yours too. But like any home, there are expenses that need to be paid in order to keep functioning. Building maintenance, grounds upkeep, insurance, salaries. There is no money, no money coming in from any outside sources to help pay for these expenses. We, as a congregation, need to pay for these. In the next week or so, you will be receiving a mailing from church. Please take time to look over it carefully. It contains a lot of information about Holy Cross as it serves us and various communities. It highlights our stewardship campaign and what we pray will be everyone's part in it. I hope in the weeks ahead that you will fill out a pledge card to show what your part will be in supporting our church and making a commitment to Holy Cross. Thank you. Hi, Aaron Cross from Stewardship. Um, if you were here last week, you probably saw Sandy from our stewardship team do a recorded message. Um, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit more. You will be receiving a mailing. But before we start, I just wanted to say thank you uh, from stewardship, from council, uh, staff. Uh, thank you for all the contributions, financial contributions to the congregation and everything you give, uh, whether it be time or talent. Um, we really appreciate it. It's been, it's been a great year. Uh, we are looking forward to next year, and in, in October is our month that we're doing that. Last year, I think we got a little behind the eight ball as far as letting you know when Commitment Sunday and that um, the, the, the commitment cards are going to be available. So we wanted to get out ahead of that this year. Um, you're going to get a mailing, and uh, Sandy referenced, and it's not junk mail, so don't throw it away. It's actually the, there's quite a bit of time that went into it from the staff and from stewardship as far as talking through uh, where we're going as a congregation and kind of as your gifts travel through the church. And it's, it's, it's interesting. Take a look at it. You'll, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, also, then we're going to have Pastor Mary Martha here next week, so that's going to be key. She's going to talk about um, abundance and giving and um, as part of her message, and she's always very inspirational. I know we all appreciate when she's here, so make sure you don't miss that. Um, and then uh, the commitment cards will be available next week. Uh, they will be available for multiple weeks. Well, I mean, pretty much through the end of the year, but we're going to run it for two or three Sundays where you can um, give it up in the basket up front with your offering, your regular offering. There'll be a box to collect the cards um, available in the stewardship area there, and I think maybe out front. Um, and then also you can always drop it by the office as well. So whatever works for you, but we wanted to give you enough time to think about that. Uh, the other thing is the slide that you see up on the screen, I think. Um, is it there? I can see it. Sorry, I know it's behind. I can see it. All right, there you go. So the, this is the, what we call the stair-step chart. We had this a number of years ago for a while, and then we didn't have it for a while. And uh, I'm a numbers guy, so I wanted to try to bring it back if we could. Um, Jeff in our office with their new software is able to pull some data. So assuming this is right, which we think it is, um, if you look at your annual giving maybe last year, think about that, like what you got on your um, statement at the end of the year, divide that by 52, that would get to a weekly giving number. So these numbers are weekly giving. And uh, if you look at that and then see the number corresponds to how many giving units or families that we have that are at each of these steps. And the ask would be just that you th think about maybe being able to take a step or two forward, right? And if we can keep pushing that way, uh, we can keep doing great things with Holy Cross. So on behalf of council, I mean, on behalf of staff, on behalf of the stewardship team, again, we want to thank you.
for your past, your present, and future gifts to this congregation. It, it, we are very blessed. We live in a world where uh, you would think that the world is going to end and the economy is in the toilet every day and everything else that's going on. But frankly, most of us are in pretty great shape and uh, we should all be very thankful for what we have. We, it's, a, it's a wonderful congregation in a wonderful situation. And uh, to be able to share that and uh, do a lot of good, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Have a great day. God's peace to you, Holy Cross Lutheran Church. I bring you a greeting from Hepheth Lutheran on 18th and Locust. It's a greeting of gratitude as we thank God for you and for the many ways that you are partners in the gospel with us. As we go into the book of Ephesians together today in preparation for Commitment Sunday, we join many people of faith who in this season of autumn come together in a spirit of thanksgiving before God, in a time of reflection as we change into a new season, and in an opportunity to make a response through stewardship of commitment to God's work through us and through our faith communities. So as we do this all over the church and through many different kinds of faith communities, I wanna say a God bless you and a thank you to you. Now, here in the book of Ephesians, as in all of Paul's letters, he begins his letters with a word of thanks to those to whom he writes. So I'd like to borrow Paul's methodology and begin today's sermon with a word of thanks to you here at Holy Cross. There are five specific things I'd like to thank you for, and one of them I'm going to talk a little bit more about than the others. First, I'd like to thank you for how you have helped us rebuild our Sunday morning lunch after the time of COVID building closure. So we've had a Sunday lunch at Hephatha for 32 years, and it really hurts to have to be out of the building and to no longer be able to serve that lunch on site during that period of time. At that meal, there are people who are incarcerated who are with us for the morning. There are children who are in foster care. There are persons who are homeless. There are people with all kinds of really tough day-to-day -day needs who look forward to that meal. And then there's kind of the rest of us who are just there having lunch. But it brings all of us together with our partners. After we could get back into the building, Holy Cross came with a team led by Tammy and with Pastor Meredith's Stan, yes, and uh, your husband on uh, making the meat. And uh, Tammy came up to me during the lunch and she said, well, Holy Cross would like to come every month. What a relief for us. And what a help as we reconstructed a schedule to feed people on Sunday mornings. Thank you for the Sunday meals. Thank you for the furniture ministry, which is a new part of our partnership with Andy Dietrich and Alexander of our congregation working together to help get particularly kids off the floor. 50, 55 children of Hephatha have gone from the floor or not having their own bed into their own bed this year, just this year. So really, yeah, we're really thankful for that. An, an organization called Sleep in Heavenly Peace is part of that also. But really, we, we have people where you go in their home, there's just basically no furniture. And so to be able to take things from where they're not being used to be where they can be used, what a blessed thing. So thanks for the Sunday meals, for the furniture ministry. Thank you. Uh, Stan could have been accused of loitering at Hephatha over the summer. Stan, thank you for all of the meals that you drew together to feed our children in work ministry and now in Tuesday Praise and Confirmation as well. We're really grateful to be able to send home any child who comes through our door feeling full, not feeling hungry. We're grateful for that. Thanks for your general offerings and your prayers. And then uh, the one I'm gonna talk a little more about, and Jeff is kindly gonna put some photos up. Thank you so much, Holy Cross, for working in our Strong Baby Sanctuary with us. There you see Holly and Beth. This is yesterday. We had a big trunk or treat planned going to be this big outside opportunity, bouncy house. We moved it all into the gym, and we had a great day. A couple hundred people came through in our Strong Baby Sanctuary. That's one of our teenagers, Amira, who's handling the popcorn for us. And we had just one of those really great afternoons 
where our families came together. I know the costumes, all the, all the pumpkins, right? Uh, where we could come together with our families and just have some fun and have the kids running around with big bags of candy. Just today, you know, a big bag of candy. And we had all these community resources. So Safe and Sound was with us. The company that does lead testing with us was with us. The Parenting Network, which does a program at our church monthly, was with us. Oh, that's Ray Lynn, the baby girl in the family that went out to Washington, D.C. to give testimony about lead poisoning. You know what I mean? I love that you know who I mean. And there's a slide with her mom. And there's the brother. That was the brother in the mask there. That's Aiden. He's the one whose lead poisoning was up at 60. He still runs a lead poisoning of about 13. So this is years in trying to bring that number down. The damage continues, and then he'll have the damage to deal with over the course of his life. But he was there yesterday, and there's his mom, who's done all that testimony at the White House. And uh, brother Jaden, his blood lead level has come down to zero. But then, you know, the brain damage is permanent. So we just have a lot that we're working on with the lead poisoning. In Strong Baby Sanctuary, we want to be sure that every family has one of these lead filtering water pitchers. And we want to make sure that every family has diapers and wipes for the month ahead. We can almost get them a month's supply these days. And formula, these items that are needed to help us reduce stress in families, and particularly where there's a family with an expectant woman, to help that pregnancy be a less stressful experience. So hopefully the baby can be carried longer and delivered for a better health outcome. So Strong Baby Sanctuary, you all are a huge part of this. And we have members from Holy Cross who are in our building basically every single Monday up in the gym, folding clothes, bringing things to help supply us with what we need to walk alongside of families as they go through rearing young children or carrying a child. Strong Baby Sanctuary, we've been a part of for eight years. We're one of the first 10 congregations in Milwaukee to do that. We can only do that because of our partners. You're a really important part of this mosaic that makes up the ministry of Hephatha. It makes it possible for us to be sharing God's generosity with others. So Strong Baby Sanctuary is faith communities, Ascension Healthcare, and the city of Milwaukee saying it's unconscionable that 100 babies or more die every year in Milwaukee before their first birthday. And Milwaukee's kind of the central area for that, 18th and Locust, excuse me, kind of a central area for that. And we want to increase the viability of the children and the health in the pregnancies. So these are all really important ministries that you are a part of. So like St. Paul, I say thank you for your partnership in the gospel. And I'm really confident that God will continue the good work that has been begun in all of you. As you prepare for your commitment Sunday, I'd like to look with you at this passage from the book of Ephesians and think about the principle of God's generosity flowing through us. Now, generosity is one of the fruits of the Spirit, right? Peace, kindness, patience, self-control. Is generosity in there? It should be, Pastor Meredith says. Generosity is a fruit of the Spirit. Have you ever heard someone say, well, I'm just not a patient person? This is not about who we are on our own. This is about who we are in Christ. So we don't get to say, I'm not a patient person. We get to say, we get to say, I have trouble being patient, but I serve a patient God. May God's patience flow through me. Same thing with generosity. It can't be just something we're trying to do as humans. We have to be able to say, God is a generous God. We are in touch every beat of the heart, right? We are in touch every breath of air. We are in touch every meal we've ever consumed, every thread on our backs. We are in touch with how God has generously provided for us even the gift of Jesus Christ. His life, his death, his resurrection. We are in touch with how God is a generous God, and then we are open to God's generosity flowing through us, not ending with us. Commitment Sunday is happening all over the place in faith communities this season. Commitment Sunday is about us being a part of the generosity of God. Instead of saying, oh, we're not that generous, saying God is generous. May we reflect God's love. 
I'd like us to all kind of try to track a moment when we were moved by someone's generosity to the point where we realize that's more than just that person being generous. That's God active in that person in generosity. So I have a story from Hephatha I've been sharing this weekend. So Hephatha's on 18th and Locust. We hope you all come and see us anytime. We'd be happy to see you. 18th and Locust. There was a family living on 19th and Locust and a family living on 16th and Locust. This is going back about, I don't know, 25, 27 years. The kids were the same age. They played together. They'd be at church together, share in the neighborhood together. This family on 19th Street, really living with a lot of severe hardship. This family on 16th Street, the same thing. Six children in the family. That's a lot of mouths to feed. This family over here had a house fire in the season of autumn, and it displaced them. And so when Thanksgiving came, we had our 10 o'clock a.m. service, and the family on 16th Street, aware of the fire and the displacement, went home after service, and the mom really did this with the kids. She got out a knife, she cut their turkey in half, and she got out all the rest of the food, the pies, the dressing, the macaroni and cheese, all of that. She split all of it in half, packed up half of their Thanksgiving meal, and went to find the family that had been displaced from 19th Street to deliver half of their 16th Street family meal to them to share at Thanksgiving. And after all these years have passed, we still know both families, both families still very involved at the church. After all these years have passed, I know that the family that used to live on 16th Street had their very best Thanksgiving the year they had no leftovers to put back in the refrigerator, the year they as a family said we can respond to this need over here because God has always taken care of us with generosity. So we can be free to give with generosity. We know God is taking care of us and we know right now God is going to take care of them through us. St. Paul did this same kind of activity in his ministry in the early church. He went to Galatia, to Philippi, to Corinth, and he said, I'm taking up a collection for those who are in hardship in Jerusalem, for those who are in poverty in Jerusalem, and I want you, churches I started, to give to this collection, send it back with me, so that the needs of those in Jerusalem can be met. It's a practical thing a lot of the time, isn't it? In Matthew's Gospel, it goes like this. I was hungry, and you? I was thirsty, and you? I was naked, and you? I was sick, lonely, in prison, and you? visited me. A lot of this is a very practical matter. You know, a calculation can be made from 16th Street to a family displaced from 19th Street. They had a fire, they lost everything. They don't have any food right now. You can do the math on it, but it's more than math. God's generosity is more than practical giving. Practical giving and math are very important. They're very much a part of it. But underneath it all is our faith. That's what this is really about. There's someone who famously said, no church has money problems. Churches only have faith problems. I think that's true. I can buy into that. That the generosity we saw from this woman over here and her six kids, what a way to teach your kids, by the way, right? The generosity we saw with this woman was about more than math. Because, you know, she had really done the math she wouldn't have done the meal 50-50 because there were three kids over here and six kids over here. She wasn't going just on math. She was going out of the faith of her heart and out of the utter confidence that since God had always provided for them, God could now use them to provide for them. So there's a theology to this. There's a faith to this. Our trust in God allows us to release what we hold on to. I pray for you. 
And you pray for us at Hephatha in this battle to be givers because we don't live in a giving culture. We live in a culture that encourages us to keep as much as we have for as long as we have and to die with such a huge excess that we will never have ever had to wonder if we would have to go without. That's what we're told every day. What you got is yours, what I got is mine. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and take care of yourself. That's not the gospel. In fact, that's against the gospel. We see everywhere in the ministry of Jesus an open hand, right? We have felt this open hand in our lives. Our commitment, our stewardship is about us saying to God, open our hands to help us to do some bold things like you, Holy Cross, have done among us at Hephatha. You know, call us on the phone. Ask us, how many kids are in confirmation? How many kids are in work ministry? How many work ministry days? You were doing some math. How many pounds of meat do we need? But that was a faith interaction. We hadn't even asked. And you saw a need and responded. That family on 19th Street didn't come to church on Thanksgiving Day and say to the family on 16th, can we have half of it? That's not how it happened. The mother here perceived the need here and simply responded. This is how God is among us. And it's the why of our giving. Why do we give? Because we know that it's all God's to begin with. That's the why of Commitment Sunday. Why did Paul make that collection for Jerusalem? Because as he was traveling around, he recognized that he could be a part of God, flowing some resources from Galatia, from Philippi, from Corinth, over to Jerusalem, where there was famine and need and want. This is why we're together as the church, because we can bump into each other, brush up against each other, feel the need, and respond out of God's generosity. I am over my time here, but I'm going to share one more story, okay? Thank you. I love in this season to be able to just bring to my heart and my mind the times when I have seen God's generosity just take someone over or take a church over. The Holy Cross, you are known as the Taco Church at Ephesus. It's much bigger than that, but I want you to know that that's a compliment. When you are in the building, while we're in worship, we smell the food. When we come down, people are eager to eat and enjoy after Sunday school. And we know that we'll see you again. It's not a one and done. There is a child in our congregation who just turned 16. She's eaten many of your tacos. She ate a bunch of those sandwiches during summer work ministry. She eats a lunch bag, nice snack bag at Tuesday Praise. And now that she's confirmed, she comes back every Monday to help with confirmation and enjoy some more of your snacks. This is a young woman you have fed and helped tend over the course of her life. Right before COVID shut down, March 12th, this young woman was adopted into a family of our congregation that lives a block from the church. You prayed for that family because that grandma in that family adopted this child after just losing her grandchild following a kidney transplant. Is this ringing any bells? It is for Pastor Meredith. You prayed for Dacasia through her long illness. Now I got, and, and then she died. And the grandma, in great generosity, found it possible to adopt her final child. She's adopted eight or nine and fostered over 50 in her life. And she adopted this child right as COVID was dawning. We all went down to children's court, and we sat there in the jury box for the adoption. Okay, a few years pass, and this young woman who's been eating all your tacos and participating at Hephatha so beautifully, she's doing the children's message with Pastor Andy today over at Hephatha. She was in work ministry, and it was a couple summers ago that I was explaining again how in work ministry, 
Every day that you're here in the summer to serve, we bank back to school dollars for you. We just bank them, we let them sit. At the end of the summer, you get your Kohl's card. Go get some new things and here's your backpack. God bless you as you start the new school year. And then I said, oh, and you know, if your card would be $300, you're going to have 30 of that that you give to Tanzania and 270 is yours to spend. That's what we call a tithe. So I was going through this, explaining all this, and the young woman raised her hand. I said, yes. Is there any way that we could give more than 10%? She was talking about herself. She wanted to know, could she go beyond the tithe? So there's math and there's faith, right? They're both an important part of our giving, the practical aspect of it, but then the faith concept of it. How is it that a young person who faced so much want and struggle in her life would want to find out if she could give to Tanzania more than 10% of her summer work ministry dollars. That's God's generosity. That's how God works. And she's in touch with how God works. You know what? I try to listen to her as much as possible. Wouldn't it be great if we were all sitting around thinking, how can we go beyond a tithe? How do we do that? How do we move to 11, to 15? But again, it's what's happening in our hearts. May you enjoy your commitment Sunday the way this young woman enjoyed giving her tithe. May you enjoy making your commitment to God, knowing that through your church, you are feeding people, getting formula to families that need it. This is just through your one partnership at Hephatha. May you enjoy knowing that you are a part of the generosity of God who didn't withhold even Christ Jesus, by whose life, death, and resurrection we have been given all. Thank you and God's blessings to you. Chell, by the way, that's spelled K-J-E-L-L. Chell. And, and I, I, I know for Germans, there's a lot of those around here. Um, you, you don't put those weird letters together, the Norwegians do. They'll do the H and the J's, the K's and the J's, the T's and the J's, and H and, and J's, and uh, even I have difficulty pronouncing. Because you can tell by my accent that even though I'm from Norway, I may have been here for a while. I have no Norwegian accent, because I was only 18 months when I came to the US. But I still am a real Norwegian, and I've got roots back there. So my name is Chell Ostad. My wife Nancy and I have been members of Holy Cross for just over a year. We moved here from Southern California, where we were part of a Lutheran congregation with, our, with its roots in San Fernando Valley, which is Los Angeles, from the early 1900s and it was involved in several ministries in the community. When looking for a congregation here in Menominee Falls, we wanted a church that shared our goals and values of reaching out to serve and support others. We were introduced to Holy Cross by our longtime friend, Debbie Plato, and we were impressed with the many ministries of the church we were equally impressed that the support for these ministries came directly from the members of the congregation who have given generously to make this all happen. We made the choice to make Holy Cross our faith home because we, along with you, were going to be able to directly support all the ministries of the congregation. It isn't only the ministries that are supported by us, but also the dedicated people who tirelessly give their time and talents to make it all happen. The money we give also makes certain we have a facility that is well maintained with cool air in the summer and heat in the winter. It's a joy to drive down Pilgrim 
and see that the property is well maintained. And we are an asset to the village. The church's ability to do all of this is only through the financial support of people like Nancy and me and you who make commitments to support our faith community at Holy Cross and follow through on those commitments. As we heard from Pastor Mary Martha last week, what we have comes from God, and our generous giving is to the glory of God. This is our calling. Join me in filling out the commitment card for 2024. Only through all of us making our commitments to Holy Cross a reality can we continue to do everything we are so supportive of. Remember, Holy Cross has only one source of funds, you. Thank you.